Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful Merry Christmassy day. All right, so Merry Christmas to all of you. It's coming, fast approaching, and I bought myself a new mic as a gift to myself. And also, I got a bunch of gifts from uh, girlfriend and friends, so I'm kind of happy right now. Hope you're having a great Christmas as well. It's not all about the gifts, okay? Just share your love. That's all it's about. And programming as well. Just keep programming and you'll have a great Christmas. So today we're going to talk about static variables and static functions within and outside of classes. Okay. I do have a few things I tested out here. We'll, we'll create these together. Okay. So I have a few things I tested out. I forgot to remove them because that was kind of sloppy. But that doesn't really matter. Anyway, before we get started, please check out the description box. You got a bunch of useful links down there nice stuff uh twitter discord support page all that so please check those out if you can uh, also a link to a video for linux users and code blocks users and then also uh drop a like subscribe if you like the content anyway let's keep going here you beautiful people um what we have is a class person so i wrote this just to save some time just copy this hopefully you can copy that uh, and then we'll get started. So let me just go ahead and do this. Let me say int. Also, I included these three things. Don't forget to include those. Um, int um, number equals 20. And then I'm just going to do a C out new line. Ooh, printing a new line. Wow, exciting. No, number. Okay, there we go. And also use, using namespace std here just to make it a little easier. I usually don't use that, but it'll make it a little easier. So I'll print number. What's going to happen? Basically, we're going to get a number printed out on the screen. No problems. But what if I do What if I do this? Uh, what if I do that in a for loop? That's what I removed before. Uh, so for 10 iterations or how many ever you want, doesn't really matter. It's about the technique here. So obviously number is in another scope now, so you can't access it outside, only within this scope within these um, curly braces. So that is the scope, right? We talked about scope before. Uh, anyway, I hope the new mic is good, by the way. It's, it's a new Yeti blackout. Um, so it, sh it should be good. I haven't really set it up properly yet. But anyway, um, so we got the int number. I don't want to print it out. It's going to print 20, 10 times. We know that. But what if I do number plus plus? If I want to add one to this number. But hey, all you guys and girls who... Um, who followed me on this, where this is being redefined each iteration, number isn't going to really change it that much, is it? It's going to add one to it after the definition, and we're going to get 21 10 times. Um, and basically, that is a problem sometimes. You want to create variables within for loops and within scopes that only defined once. You only give them w one chance to be defined, and then they're going to stay at that number, and then you can play around with them like this within the loop so there won't be any redefinition and that is what static is for pretty much you don't redefine that variable it will st you will go into memory and c plus plus will know this is static so i'm not going to redefine this i'm going to keep it and i'm not going to remove it um in the same way okay it will still be within the scope but it will only be defined once and then you can play around with this so now this should hopefully give us 21 22 23 see it was defined once and then it kind of just added one to it because it saw that it was already defined so what static does it helps us uh, overcome these kind of problems in programming so just remember this is in the for loop or in any type of loop or any type of redefinition functions or anything like that it's a really good way to uh to kind of uh yeah create variables which which just which are just defined once to repeat myself for the 10th time anyway let's add that to a function so static void print okay this this will be the example i removed as well so what it's going to do is going to print uh no c out hello world okay now this won't be that much of a function to do. I just want to show you that you can actually assign static to print as well. And I'm pretty sure you won't be able to redefine this, but you can overload it. So uh, what I did before was I had an I had a int here, uh, int i, and I'll probably have a char c here. And I'm just going to print 
those out as well just to see that it works so you can overload these but the only thing i did different you don't even need the static here basically it's just you can add static to these functions if you want it more important part about this is going to be in the fun in the classes okay um that's where it's going to be the most important but just to show you the syntax of how to write a function that is static all right uh but what i can do i can just say print 20 here and i can say print um f and if i run this hopefully we'll get hello world 20 hello world f so you can overload those just like a regular function so don't freak out that's all the, these are just regular functions and no problems but now we come to the important part this is where we'll see what static really helps us do so say you have a class person okay and all of these variables in here they'll be object they'll be uh, different for each person object, right? So remember we talked about classes, how they are just a blueprint. And when you create an object following this blueprint, they'll each have these variables and these functions that they can call. And each of the functions will call their own specific member variables that they got assigned to the, them, right? Um, so uh, these name and age variables will be different for each object, but static variables aren't like that. They're class, the, like class, what do you call it? Um, they, they aren't different for each object of the class. There's only one variable for the whole class. Okay, so an example of that would be if you're handling, if you're creating a class for a company called, uh, for a freighting company called Box, Box or something like that, or any type of uh, object that you want to ship, usually those have an ID, right, that don't, don't want to overlap. They don't want to be the same as any other id so you probably want to have a number where you add something to it for each box that is created and you want this process to be automatic and within the class then you could create a static variable int id okay and this id variable will not change will not be specific for each object of the person class it will be specific for the class itself the, the whole class okay and that id will stay depending on it doesn't really matter how many person objects you create it will still be the same no matter what you set it to it will still be the same for all of those class objects so if i want to define a static variable in a class i have to do it outside of the class so once the class i usually do it after i create the class if it's a h file like this um, a header file i'll just create the static variable down here and then i will define it at the top very top of the CPP file of, for that class. Okay, so I'll show you a also a example with the dice class static vari variables, and I'll say static int uh, id here as well. I'll just call it id. But if I want to give this the value zero or one from the start or zero, I'll give it the value zero. And then once we start off dice, each dice class created will add one to id. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to say int dice id equals zero. That's how you define it. And once you do that, it will be set to zero in the CPP. And then you can start saying dice id plus plus. Okay, that's how you do it. So once you do, um, once you define it, it will be defined once, it will be set once. Like that doesn't matter how many times you create a dice pro dice uh, object, and then this will add one to it each time a dice object is created. Okay, so that's how that works. And then we want to probably create a function for that, but I'll I'll do that in my new person class. So I'm just gonna say person id equals zero here. Okay, uh, and then you need to give it the type it has in front as well when you're defining it. Uh, or initializing it initialize static variables for class person okay and then uh, functions like that and then main just so you know what the hell's going on uh, so there you go and then what we're gonna do is this ID variable it's gonna we're gonna add one to it uh, person ID plus plus 
add one to it each time a person object is created. And then we're going to create a static function to get this um, variable back. So static get ID. And then we're just going to say return person ID uh, like that static int get ID return person dot ID. So usually you want a static function when you're handling static when you're returning static variables and stuff. Um, because I'm pretty sure I'm not sure 100% if this this should work. Yeah, that should work. But I like static variables and static functions to handle static variables. So I, this is kind of nice. Uh, so I did that. And you can use these in non static functions as well. So don't worry about that. It's just that one anytime we get ID, we want to just define this get ID function once as well. So that means that this get ID function is basically the same for every class. All right, so that's a good thing to do. Uh, anyway, 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 uh, let's create a few person objects here. So I'm gonna create a person, um, person one. Okay, I'm not, it's just gonna be empty name everything. And then I'm gonna say person one dot get, um, and then, oh yeah, sorry about that. Then you want an int ID as well here. So you're going to do person ID plus plus, and you're going to say this ID equals person ID at the time of creation. That's how you want to save the ID because this will keep growing and we can't save that specific ID anywhere uh, if you don't do it like this. Okay. And you probably, then you probably don't want to get the person ID. You want to get this ID instead. Uh, person one. Okay. Then we're just going to do a C out on that and a new line like this. And then we run that. Uh, so hopefully we'll have one here. Exactly. So we got one. I'll do that below. Whoops. I know what I did. Okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, close that. So I'll do that stuff below all this crap here. Okay, so person one, get ID, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do another person. And I'm gonna do person two, that get ID. And we'll see that the static variable has increased to one, from one to two. And you save that to within the person two. And we'll do it one more time for good measure. Person three. All right, and then at the end, we're gonna print out the class static variable. So person I I let's see I think it's under private that's why it's under private so if you want to get that um, static int get um, get ID I'm pretty sure I could overload those return no not like that um, let's see get static ID there we go return person ID so there you go because it is it is private so you probably want to do it like that okay um, and then I'm just gonna do person get static ID and then you want to use these the class name and the colon colon to get that static function okay that's how you get static functions and this is the same for all class objects so there's no specific person object calling this function okay and then we're just gonna print this and run it because we're yeah we're getting on we're, we're ending really soon uh one two three i think yeah that is the three person objects and three is the right now what the person id is at so if we create one more this would be four and the, the other one would be four so see how it is saving the ids and stuff just using the static id um variable um, so yeah, that's good. I'm sorry for being a little slow because I'm thinking kind of on my feet here. I just want to show you one last thing before we go. Uh, if you have a function here, which is static, um, get static ID, we'll do the same thing, get static ID, and then we'll just say static int like this. And you want to define this here in the CPP class. You probably want to do it up here as well. So you want to say static functions, and then you'll just do the same thing here. Um, int get static ID, 
and then you'll define it here and then you'll say person no dice like that so int dice get static id return dice or id like that okay perfect so just remember that this is the how you do it if you divide it up into uh, header and cpp files and this is how you do it within the same file okay make sure to use the int before and then when defining the function use the static in front of that um and yeah there you go that's pretty much it that's pretty much it i hope i wasn't jumping up and down too much and i hope you follow through on these videos or in this video uh and i taught you about static stuff so hopefully hopefully that helps just play around with it that's the most important thing when you're when you're practicing programming just play around with everything um have fun with it try to try to experiment and you'll learn uh, just fine but thank you so much for watching and in the next video we'll probably talk about something more about classes go deeper into classes uh, constructors and operator overloading and stuff like that uh, but again thank you so much i hope you liked the mic hope the uh, video quality was fine sound quality was fine and just check out the description box all the nice links drop a like subscribe if you like the content hopefully i'll see you on discord or otherwise i'll see you in the next one all right bye bye